I'm Gail Tannehill, and I've been coming to Journey Church since we first started at the Votec. Eight months ago, I lost my husband, Bud Tannehill, who many of you know. You may not know me, but most of, most all of you knew him. I'm Dwight, and this is Deborah Phillips, and we've been members of Journey Church since the beginning of the church. Ten days ago, uh, my mother passed away, so seven days ago, we had her funeral service. I'm Mitch Freeman. This is my wife, Patricia. Three weeks ago, this Sunday, we were at church. The following day, Pat was sitting on the edge of the bed with our granddaughter, watching the cat in the hat, and she had a heart attack. This was so unexpected. I mean, you're never prepared, but this was so unexpected. And I, the first few weeks and months, I, I, I think I was just kind of in shock. She had a, three blockages, required a triple bypass, and if it wasn't for the church, all the prayers, and the emails, and the visits, and phone calls, I don't think Pat would have survived. And during that uh, time after her death, well then you really felt <clears throat> the warmth of the family. And one particular thing that just tugs at my heart and it still does to this day is the emails. Every morning when I got up, I would have more emails from people I didn't even know. Uh, I didn't know them, but they knew Bud, and they would tell me stories about things, how Bud had affected their life. We got the call that Dwight's mom had passed away, and you know, my pastor, that was the first call that I made because I knew my husband was hurting and I was hurting too. I was at loss, you know. I, there was a period that I actually thought I was gonna lose her. And if it weren't, you know, prayers with you and, and talking with other people, that, uh, I don't think I would have made it. As I started to try to do what I thought Bud would want me to do, I think that's what got me through it, was I kept thinking about what Bud would want. And he was the one that always took the grandchildren to church. And that's when I realized how important the church family is to you. I mean, how very, how, how crucial they are to you. And I knew I was gonna, we were gonna have Selena's good cooking when our hearts were hurting. And Karen Robbins to have ice chests full of ice and what things that we don't even think about and toilet tissue and paper towels. And even if they couldn't find us, they, they knew where to leave things. So they're, they're just part of your family. They know what you need. We've been blessed. Uh, people have, have given us money which was totally unexpected. Uh, meals have been brought to our home. Everyone, everyone is going to go through the portals of death someday. It's going to happen. And that is a very important part of life. And so in the process of your church family helping you live your daily life, you know that you're also preparing for your eternal life. Christy came up to the hospital, brought me a, a plant, and every time she looked at me, she cried, and she said, I expected you to be this little pathetic looking thing in this bed, and I said, I'm wonderful. I knew Bud was involved in the angel food ministry, so that, that was my first thing to tell Cheryl, was that I would help her as soon as I could. Don't wait, don't wait for them to ask, you know, to come and help, because I was waiting on her to say, Gail, when can you come and help? And, you know, but in here she, she was doing the work of four or five people, and she needed all kind of help. I got involved with angel food like the month Cheryl started it there at the church. And I've took, I've missed now, I've missed three times in three years, which really just upset me greatly because I just love the time that I have with the angel food and distribution and taking orders. And There's just so much more to church and being part of the, being involved, being part of the church family. And I said, you need a church family. You need a strong church because as Christian parents, you do everything you can do. You know you rely on the Lord. But when that church family, you know, it's not just you praying your children under that umbrella. It's the pastor, it's the youth pastor, it's the children's pastor, <coughs> everyone. And I think it's just such a, a blessing and I cannot imagine life without a church family. The church family kept me grounded because they were constant. I mean, even if it was just a quick email, a quick phone call, uh, they kept me grounded, they kept me connected. They kept me connected to them until I was ready to come to them and say, what can I do to help? I, I can't imagine uh, having to go through this without a church family. Uh, it's, it was difficult 
as it was, you know, with the family around. But I just imagine without everybody's prayers and thoughts that it would be horrible. Indeed, life does exist at Journey Church for us. Church has been life, our life. Church has been life for me. It truly has been life for me.